welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's June 23rd, 2014, and let's get straight into the news tonight. Our top story, Obama on Iraq. There's no amount of American firepower that's going to be able to hold this country together. And the test now, not just for Mr. Maliki, but for uh, all the leadership in Iraq is, uh, are they able to set aside their uh, suspicions, uh, their uh, preferences uh, for the good of the whole and we don't know the one thing I do know is is that if they fail to do that then no amount of uh, 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 military action by the United States uh, can hold that country together but as the editor of this piece points out the idea is not to hold Iraq together but rather to break it down into constituent components along religious and sectarian lines and I could not agree more but Obama isn't the only one talking about Iraq. Tony Blair is getting in on the action where he admits taking out Saddam is partly to blame for the crisis in Iraq. You know, who would have thunk it? And let's take a look at the article. Writing in the Financial Times today, Mr. Blair said, of course the Iraq of 2014 bears in part the imprint of the removal of Saddam Hussein 11 years ago. To say otherwise, as a recent editorial in this newspaper implies that I do, would be absurd. So the moral of this story is that if you're going to remove somebody from power, you have to know what you're going to replace that person with. Just like here in the States, I hear people talk about all the time, let's impeach Obama, let's impeach Obama. And I'm not saying that's a bad idea because, you know, you see the drones, you see the wiretapping, you see the uh, unaccountability for things like Benghazi and Fast and Furious, and not just Obama Bush. You have the Iraq War, which is our current topic right now. But if all you do is get rid of these guys, you just impeach them, and you don't change the power structure that allowed them to act those ways, then all you're going to do is replace them with somebody who's just as bad, if not worse. United Nations may soon be paying water bills in Detroit. WWJ, a news radio station in Detroit, reports the United Nations may be paying delinquent water bills in the former Motor City. According to the Water Department spokeswoman, Curtis Garner, Nearly half of the residents of the bankrupt city cannot or do not pay their water bills. This has led activists to declare access to water a human right that should be guarded by the United Nations. Garner said that although she believes access to water is a God-given right, the fact remains that somebody has to pay. You know, somebody does have to pay those bills. And as the author of this piece points out, a large part of the problem in Detroit is the bankruptcy and paying for the city's bureaucracy, which includes pensions. So when you're in a city such as Detroit, which has been plagued by uh, many problems for many different years, I mean, is it so bad that you want to hand the keys of anything over to the United Nations? We've done reports here at InfoWars talking about how the United Nations is negotiating with uh, the Alamo in San Antonio to become a UNESCO site. And do you really want a gun-grabbing organization like the United Nations, not to mention many other offenses, coming in and taking over anything. I mean, it, is it that bad? I know you guys have problems in Detroit, but is it that bad that you want to hand the keys over to the United Nations? Because when we're talking about this gun grabbing issue, you remember Detroit is a place where the police say, come here at your own risk, because they say they just flat out can't protect you. And most people say, well, that's a bad police department. I respect these guys for being honest. They say, we don't have the manpower, we don't have the whatever, the finances, the resources. To protect you, you have to protect yourself. Because you remember earlier this year, we gave you the article about the single mother, or she was uh, single in the house at the time when these guys broke in and were trying to harm her. But she said, no, I'm going to pull out my gun and I'm going to defend myself in my homestead against you three armed attackers. And she chased these guys off. And the police showed up to say, hey, we think it's great that this lady defended her home from these armed attackers because we couldn't be there to protect her at that time. So Detroit, uh, it may be bad, but United Nations is not the way to go. And another way that it's not the way to go, we're talking from the United Nations to the United Kingdom, and they're beginning a beta test of a cashless society. A shopping street in Manchester has banned cash as part of an experiment to see if Brits will accept a cashless society, while all London buses will stop accepting cash payments from next month onwards. The purpose behind the experiment, which will take place in South Manchester, is to test customer and business reaction to the idea, and they're being overseen by the credit card processor HandyPay. So if you enter this cashless society like they said they wanted in Louisiana, I believe back in 2011, they said, we don't even want you to pay in cash for garage sales, any type of secondhand purchase. I mean, do you really want Big Brother to be watching you all the time? And occasionally, yeah, I go on 
go online and order something, but by and large, I have to pay in cash. And even some people who I won't mention laugh at me for paying in cash, but I have no problem with it. I guess I'm like Catherine Albrecht, and I just enjoy having my personal privacy, not being tracked everywhere I go, not having every purchase that I make monitored. Uh, so if you use this, uh, this uh, microchip society where they track everything you do, they'll be able to track where you shop, who you hang around with, uh, where you go, what type of places and purchases that you are interacting with. So if you value your privacy, you can have credit cards or bitcoins or other things like that, but don't throw cash under the bus. And they didn't throw this guy under the bus, they just slammed him into a wall. A man was arrested for, quote, being stupid. So in a city of Chicago where this took place, where they have gang shootings and drug shootings every weekend, I guess it was so terrible that the gentleman uh, snatches a parking ticket out of the officer's hand that the officer had to manhandle this man and uh, basically just beat him up. So your priorities seem to be way out of whack, city of Chicago, when you're beating up guys for parking tickets. And if you, this happened to you, and I don't mean like if the guy would have did that to a cop. I mean if you as a normal citizen, if you were a waiter and you hand somebody their check and they snatch it out your hand and you slam the guy's face down in a bowl of soup, you're going to jail. But if you have a badge and a gun, you're supposedly above the law. So hopefully somebody can get justice uh, for that action. And I hate to say it, but honestly, in today's America, that guy was lucky that that's all that happened to him was getting slammed into a wall. You say, what do you mean? Because normally these situations, the guys get tased, they get the dog sicked on them, or they get shot. You know, this happens all the time where like 20 other officers jump in and start beating the guy with billy clubs. So, I mean, I hate to say it, but the guy is lucky that this happened to him, but hopefully something will happen to this officer and we can get justice for this poor victim. And if you want justice for your children, you have to take them out of the public school system. That's why we have this opt out of Common Core and opt in to the Ron Paul curriculum. Oklahoma recently took action to protect the state's children from the federal education bureaucracy by withdrawing from Common Core. Common Core is the latest attempt to provide states with money taken from the American people into adopting a curriculum developed by federal bureaucrats and education experts. In exchange for federal funds, states must change their curriculum by, for example, replacing traditional mathematics with reform math. So if you don't want your children to be taught that 2 plus 2 equals 5, and you also don't want them to be taught how to masturbate, you can go to schoolof1776.com. It supports Infowars.com as well as Ron Paul, and it can get you the Ron Paul curriculum. Now, as we wind down our segment tonight, I want to bring your attention to this. Flights filled with immigration detainees land in Massachusetts. Immigration and Customs Enforcement is confirming that flights filled with immigration detainees are landing right here in Massachusetts. So far, four of the stops have been at Hanscom and two at Logan Airport, six planes in total. At least two of those flights happened during the last couple of weeks. ICE confirms these are commercial ICE-owned chartered planes carrying detainees and that this is all part of the normal removal process. And the kicker about this story is, is that Governor Deval Patrick says he's not even aware of this, about the immigration uh, crisis going on in Massachusetts. And I'm not so much knocking the guy, but this is the same governor who has not seen the footage of the Boston bombing suspects actually placing the bomb. Once again, I'm not saying that it's his fault. I'm just saying that he's not being kept in the loop. And the reason why this concerns me is because we've seen here at InfoWars personally witness the catch and release tactics of immigration of Border Patrol, these ICE agents, here in the state of Texas, I wonder if those same aspects apply to the state of Massachusetts. And we'll end tonight with this. Feds stand down as U.S. border collapses. And this is a special report filed by Kit Daniel. He's on the border right now. And you can see this report right after this break. But first, if you like this broadcast and you'd like to see it continue, stop by PrisonPlanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can see the Alex Jones Show, the Nightly News, the Rants, the Special Reports, and so much more at PrisonPlanet.tv. So stay tuned right after this break for more special reports. Alex Jones here to break down some exciting developments in the area of research concerning supplemental iodine. It's nothing less than phenomenal. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. And I used some of the mainline iodine supplements and they upset my stomach and I had some issues with it. Until I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group, who I was already interviewing as an expert on my radio show, and I began 
taking the product before he actually rolled it out. You now know it as survival shield, true nascent iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals that are incredibly powerful that no one else has as a source for their iodine from between seven and 12,000 feet, literally drilled out of the ground. You put it on a hot plate and it turns into the pure gas. No one else has 99.99% pure iodine. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. I was over 270 pounds. And with the iodine exercise and better diet, I have lost now more than 50 pounds total and I'm continuing to lose the weight. I have more energy, my libido, all this crap came out of my skin. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, this is trailblazing, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off Super Detox Special at InfoWarsLife.com. In the border city of Brownsville, Texas, the incredible decrease of Border Patrol activity emphasizes that not only is the Border Patrol stretched thin, but agents are also being pressured to stand down from enforcing immigration laws as the federal government also begins to enact a media blackout on America's vanishing borders. We're here at the international border in Brownsville, Texas, and as you can see, there's hardly any Border Patrol whatsoever, even at the border. You would think with the current flood of tens of thousands of immigrants from Central America overwhelming our borders, Brownsville would be crawling with Border Patrol vehicles. But, on the extreme contrary, we saw, no exaggeration, well over ten times as many Border Patrol vehicles parked at various facilities than we saw driving the streets in and around Brownsville. In fact, we stood for well over an hour outside the border checkpoint in the city and only saw maybe one Border Patrol vehicle every ten to fifteen minutes drive by. Just look at this wide open border fence. It's at night and nobody's guarding it. It's wide open. This just highlights the illusion of border security by the Obama administration. Consider the fact that the surge of immigrant youth has increased from 6,500 in 2011 to 90,000 this year alone, an increase of over 1,300%. And it's crystal clear that the Obama administration is forcing the Border Patrol to back off of enforcing existing immigration laws. One of the very few Border Patrol agents that we observed actually patrolling South Texas took a very keen interest in us. As you can see, he speeds up to catch up to our vehicle and likely ran our plates. We tried to flag him down and talk to him, but he didn't respond. He tailed us very closely for several minutes, nearly all the way into downtown Brownsville before he finally peeled off. We were driving around the border. I guess he took an interest in us. We're standing outside a illegal immigration detention facility about 40 miles northeast of Brownsville, Texas. We drove down to the guard station and asked if we could take a tour of the facility as journalists. But they refused, told us to turn around, and even told us to stop recording. Yeah, we're journalists out of Austin. Is it possible for us to take a look around? No, sir. Drive around? No? You will have to call in and, and get an appointment. There, there are signs. You do have one sign. Not to be recorded. Okay. That's fine. Seen. Over the past few weeks, the feds have been shutting down areas immediately on the U.S. side of the border, which have traditionally been open to the public. There they are closing them down by citing safety concerns. Do not enter. Authorized personnel only. Signs like these have been popping up in the last couple of weeks on our side of the border. They keep the public and the press away and in the dark about the border collapse. This is simply a media blackout that allows the Obama administration to control the narrative on illegal immigration. They've already been doing just that by deceptively skewing the number of deportations in their favor by classifying cases where immigrants are stopped and turned back before crossing the border as deportations, which makes the Obama administration seem tougher on immigration than it actually is, according to an article by the Daily Mail on June 18th.